Uh, what we all should be focused on actually is directly related to uh, our, our journey, uh, just like what we did last season uh, for this coming season. And that, of course, is on the agenda for tonight um, is walking through registration. So uh, at any point, anyone can go and make an account. We leave that on all year round so anyone can go and register so long as they've got a .edu and they're coming from a Center of Academic Excellence school and they can join our Discord and all that. But what of course has recently opened is to actually register your team for the upcoming season. So that's something that's a bit new and we definitely wanna walk through that tonight. Jump right into this and we won't have any more audio issues, I'm sure. So hopefully now you got my screen and uh, what we can take a look at here, of course, is our website. And the thing we really wanna highlight is going to be, what is it gonna look like for you to create a team? What are some of the visual cues and things you should pay attention to and the little gotchas as we're going and walking through this. So provided you've already created an account on our website, all that it really takes is one person to get the team started. And that is what I would highly recommend is that you take, whether it be your team captain or team president, or just someone who's really active in your club. Um, and perhaps they're maybe one of the more organizing, uh, uh, you know, emphasis type people, someone who, who can help keep, keep you guys on track and get you actually enrolled in all of this. Have that person come into their account and actually kind of click some of the same buttons that I am. So then you can reserve and sign up and register for one of the slots at the regional competitions that you're eligible to join. That's really what you want to be able to do ASAP. Um, this also helps us big time on from an, uh, from an organizing perspective, because then we can start to see which of the competitions that are filling up really quickly and we can plan capacity accordingly, which are the ones that perhaps uh, haven't clicked the buttons yet and they need a little bit of help and a little bit of encouragement. So the sooner you can do this, the better, even if you're not entirely sure what your final roster is gonna be. If you know your school is gonna compete, have somebody take uh, take the initiative and go in there and click the button just like I'm gonna hear tonight. So uh, the place, of course, where you're gonna go is I'm currently logged in. And uh, if you're logged in, you should be able to go to the students section on our NCAA Cyber Games website. And uh, when you go to students, it doesn't really matter which button you click, whether you click discover teams or team management, you kind of end up in this same basic place uh, that, that is uh, you know, your account management type page. So it's under students in here, this is where you're gonna wanna end up. And the buttons along the left sort of walk you through what are some of the things that you really should be emphasizing here tonight. So you can see here, we can try to go discover teams. We could try to see are there teams that I'm currently a part of. Uh, or I could just go and say, all right, let's go ahead and create a team. So these are some of the features that you should be kind of walking your way through and, and see what's already out there. And of course, this is an entirely new infrastructure that a lot of our, our tech team has stood up and we're really thankful to them. They continue to bang away at this and make it flawless, bug-free, um, but also has some really cool uh, fancy uh, features this year that we didn't have uh, last year as far as team management and registration. So I'm definitely excited for that. So hats off. Yeah, I'm glad that you, that um, yeah, go ahead. I'm glad that, that, that you mentioned that, that it's all brand new. So some of the teams that are coming back that weren't here last year um, are going to you know log in and take a look at this and kind of the process is a little bit new so that's you know one of the main reasons that we wanted to go over that tonight is just to show you you know the new features how to track things you know lots of new improvements and things and uh, we also I heard that we fixed the website uh, loading on iPhones because it was it was broken for a long time and they finally figured that part out too so uh, lots of continuous improvements here and uh, yeah like James mentioned you know getting your your team signed up is going to guarantee that you're able to compete on the weekend that you want to compete um, and you know those will fill up as as soon as we have you know the teams uh, the maximum of teams for each of those weekends so uh, we're opening this up early earlier than what we've done in the past giving teams uh, you know some time to get familiar with it and you know just kind of get uh, everything lined up and uh, you know ready to go for our season which is going to start pretty soon after uh, the next uh, semester starts so uh, not too far away. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I would emphasize uh, one of the things you will notice if you go to Discover Teams and there is a school uh, team that competed last year, um, you will notice that those teams are still visible in our system. So we do intend to keep that data there for archiving purposes. Um, so these are something you want to pay a close attention to. If you go to Discover Teams, realize there might be a team there from last year. You can see the event. And that would be the big thing you want to look at to see what team uh, event is this one is this particular roster associated with. And so that's where you can see, okay, if it says 2023, 
that was last season, um, right? Because we're looking at the spring year of whatever it is that this particular event was. So you should be looking for, do you have a 2024 event roster? And then figure out who is the team captain for that particular roster. So in this case, you can see, I've got a, a particular team that has been made at my institution, but it's not for this season. So in other words, no one has made one for the upcoming season for 2024. And so, yeah, I should take the initiative, perhaps go ahead and do that and then be able to add people to my roster from there. Okay. Um, and uh, definitely whoever's going to be your team captain and as well as the roster, a lot of these things are things we can swap out later. Just make sure the ideal part is whoever is your team captain, they're a good solid point of contact in case we need to email you or hit you up in Discord, then that would be a really good thing to be able to do. So, um, okay, so that would be the idea. You know, you can kind of work your way through team management. I could click the create a team button in a variety of different places. And then this starts to get me to the part that I'm really interested in, which is where you'll see this like create a team section. And if you want to create a custom name, you can. Uh, we are tagging every single team, of course, with your institution. So we know what institution you're from, but if you wanted to come up with an awesome, fun, funny name, uh, then uh, you know that's something that you could do. So maybe I'll do like Mike and James versus the world. All right, fine, we'll do that. And uh, <laughs> let's see if you guys can beat us this particular season, good luck. Um, and then I'll say register team. And so what you'll notice is when you click the register team after you've got a team name, this particular interface is the part that is completely re-engineered, completely new, and it provides some really awesome fancy features for being able to register, manage, and create your team. So some things that have happened. I have now the name and I am now the team captain. So the team captain, of course, is visible here at the top. In order to actually create a team and register for a specific event, we do require a faculty point of contact. This is part of our rules. It's what we call our faculty liaison. And uh, ideally, of course, this would be an active faculty member at your school. Um, if it is someone who's staff, maybe they don't teach, but they're involved in the club, that's okay. Um, we really just want some official employee at the school to be the point of contact for every single team. And again, ideally, this is someone who will actually answer their email in case we need to reach out to the school for whatever reason. Um, if they don't have an account on our website, our system will send them an email to join. So if they already have an account, that's great. We could just go and add them directly. But if they don't, you know, they'll be able to get an email. And so, for example, if I tried to add Mike, like mlisi at mvcc.edu, we could see for this particular contact, when I click add, we'll be able to see it's like, okay, this particular person hasn't created an account yet, you know, uh, but that that's fine. I can go ahead and do that. Or I could say Mike and then Lisi. And then ideally this will go and send him an email and so he'll be notified that hey you've been added as the liaison um, and uh, now added to this particular roster and they'll get invited to uh, go and join uh, the invitation is not valid indefinitely um, and so you might want to notify that person to uh, try to have them uh, also come to our site and uh, uh, be able to register uh, within that time frame. But uh, that's of course only the link that gets sent to them. At any time, they'd be able to just go to the website directly if you just give them the website uh, link and they'll be able to join. But okay, fine. So I've got my team captain, I've got my faculty liaison. Now I'll be able to go through and add any uh, other teammates that I want uh, so long as they're coming also from my institution. Um, so for, uh, for example, if I wanted to add perhaps Brody uh, to, our, uh, to our team roster, I could add in his particular email and say, okay, great. And we'll notice that this is somebody who now has been added to the roster because that account already existed. And, and this is a, uh, uh, something I could r rinse and repeat, right? Uh, Mike, I believe according to our rules, it's, it's 10 people per team is what we're looking at for a maximum. And that is including the captain. So captain plus nine. Um, and so, yeah, just, just keep going and adding as many as uh, you need to, to be able to get through this. If I needed to go and make someone team captain and remove myself, like I, I could do a lot of that to be able to deal with team management or remove someone from the team. Uh, most of these buttons should be pretty self-explanatory sort of at, at that point. But realistically, this is what you want to do. And maybe I'll just do this for a minimum, right? I got a captain. I got a liaison, I've added someone else to the team, I've got a team name, okay? How, how is this gonna help me get to the point of actually registering for an event? Well, let's scroll down. As you scroll down, you'll notice in these little like cards, we've got these little graphical cards that show each of the different regional events that we're running. And each card 
will be able to have a checklist to see, are, have you met all the requirements to register for this particular event? Now, remember, we're running about, what, 10, 12, something like that, different regional events over the course of the spring season. And so some of those events you're eligible to join, some of them you're not. And the system should automatically put the events that you are eligible to join at the top. It'll prioritize those, but it does allow you to see the others just in case something else is wrong with our system. You know, maybe we've got you in the wrong time zone or in the wrong region, and you really think you should be registering for one of the others. You could try clicking the button, and if it doesn't work, then contact us, right? We're, we're trying to put our entire schedule out there so you can see some of this stuff. We're not trying to hide that information. That is kind of by design. So for example, the first one here at the top, I'm at Mohawk Valley. We're in the Northeast, so this is a region that shows up as one of the first ones. And it has, of course, the date that goes along with it, February 17th. And if I scroll down to the next card, pretty much same thing, right? Here's the next Northeast region, Northeast 2, which happens to be in March. If I continue to scroll down, you'll see there's also an Eastern Overflow region. In case I, my team is ineligible for the first two dates, we do have a sort of a catch-all overflow region for the entire Eastern uh, seaboard here. Um, as I scroll down beyond that, that's where I'm likely to get into some of the other regions, like the Midwest region or the Southeast region. And as I look through, of course, you'll see it gives the big red X to say, well, we think based on where your school is, uh, you're not in the Midwest, and so you don't satisfy being able to register your team for this particular weekend. Um, it does start. It does try to indicate that, but it, we still want to show that to you, so then you can see if you're really like maybe something's wrong in our system. You, you can tell us that, and uh, and we'll try to make it so that these buttons can work for you appropriately. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, otherwise, if I kind of just scroll up to the top here and say maybe just I'll pick this first one. I could decide, all right, I've got my Northeast region. I've got my team limit. Okay, I've, I, I have, there, there's room here in this particular. Um, minimum team size. Oh, I haven't, I haven't met the minimum team size. Let's see, can we think of another person to invite? Uh, maybe Sean, maybe I'll, I'll add Sean as well to the list. Sean Radigan at mbcc.edu. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna need three people, I believe, to satisfy this. Hey, now I've made all the, all the lights go from red to green. And this should allow me to then go and register for the event. Okay, great. I can say register team. And in the bottom right, it says success, team registered. All right, cool. So, Mike, questions. How, how painful was that process? Were you able to follow along? And did my mic cut out at any point in that? Um, not that I noticed uh, as far as the mic goes. Um, so I think we're good there. Uh, really, it looks really straightforward as far as the, uh, the process goes. There's one kind of caveat there that I think is important to uh, let people know about is that institutions, any school that wants to compete, if they have multiple teams, they have to compete on the same day. So uh, what you may find is that if you're fielding, you know, two teams because you have enough people and you have you know, more than 10, um, you're going to have to decide as a school which weekend works for everybody. Um, so that's one of the things that shows up in there. It's kind of default to green because there wasn't a conflict, but you may notice that uh, everything kind of fits except for the part where um, somebody else in the institution has already uh, registered for a weekend. So that'll restrict uh, which weekend you go for. Um, and, you know, so in, in those instances, um, you know, just make sure that you're communicating with the other students there and make sure that it works for everybody before signing up just so that it's not just locking, you know, other people out from being able to participate if it doesn't uh, work for them. Yeah, and this is part of why we do allow you to discover teams as well. And so doing a lot of the team discovery uh, should be should be something that will allow you to um, be able to see. Let's see if I refresh the page here, is it gonna load? Uh, here we go. So I've got Sean, oh, I can see Sean is going and creating one here in the background as well. Um, <laughs> and so you can start to see some of the other teams that are, uh, are also created at your particular institution so then you can be aware as to, okay, someone else in your club might've already made one and maybe they already picked a date. And so if you want to uh, uh, also create a team, you have to stick to the same event. Uh, we, we allow this for, um, uh, for the purpose of uh, this particular instance. Uh, there are a number of schools, universities that are actually quite large and they have uh, lots of perhaps students in a cybersecurity program and there's a cybersecurity club. Uh, and there might also be a computer science club and the clubs don't necessarily talk. They don't necessarily know each other, but they both want to compete. 
And so this is useful for, especially for those large institutions that have multiple clubs that don't exactly have crossover. They don't exactly communicate. You have to be aware that there might be another club at your institution um, that has already picked a date. And so either communicate with them, send them an email if that date doesn't work for you or communicate to us and we'll, we'll try to deconflict that the best we can. So, uh, but that is a requirement that we have. We don't want institutions competing with multiple teams on multiple different weekends. So you have to all compete on the same weekend if you're gonna have multiple teams from your institution, but uh, otherwise we do allow that. So. So I think that that handles a lot of the main checklist. As you go down, we're only registered for one team or one event. We've got we've met the minimum. We've got uh, the ability to go up to 10 members. I've invited a faculty liaison, so they should get that email and be able to register on our website, ideally within a week. Um, but uh, if they uh, miss that week timeline, they can still, of course, go just go to the website directly and be able to uh, create an account as normal. Um, and that would be a good thing about the faculty liaison. Don't just have them make an account, have them actually get in our Discord server. Um, if they're in our Discord server, we can have direct communication with them. That would be uh, ideal. But you know, if we have to do by email, okay, so be it. Uh, we've picked our region. And then of course we've met the different check boxes. So again, hats off to, uh, I believe a lot of the work here being done by Brody Davis and Sean Radigan as uh, creating this awesome registration interface. Um, uh, I believe also people like uh, Mike Burke, as well as uh, Steve Cook, probably can also handle a lot of the logistical questions if you have logistical questions on a lot of this stuff. So a lot of people in Discord that if you ping them in Discord, they're going to get back to you uh, uh, probably within 24 hours, most of them within the minute uh, to be able to respond and get you moving in the right direction. So um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mike, anything else that I kind of missed here on this process? No, I think you, you covered things pretty well. Um, you know, just to reinforce, like you said, any issues, any kind of problems that arise, you know, uh, reach out in the Discord. Uh, that's going to be the best way to, to, you know, get that issue addressed, get it looked into and make sure that everything gets resolved uh, correctly. So uh, please reach out and uh, yeah, start thinking about, you know, the registering your team, getting the team together and uh, getting things signed up. Uh, like I said, we're uh, we're getting close to the the first uh, the first date for the next season there. So um, we're you know we're really looking forward to having everybody you know join us there and you know no time like the present to uh to get your team going that this is probably also worth highlighting it says sort of here at the top of this little card notice we do lock registration so it kind of tells you here's when registration ends and then here's when roster changes end so i believe we lock registration uh gosh don't quote me on this i want to say it's something like nine or ten days before the event and then we lock roster changes like a couple days before the event. Um, so getting your team in there, you still have a couple days afterwards to then go and tweak things. So you're gonna wanna pay close attention to some of these dates. That's what these things are doing. They're counting down to how much longer do you have to get your team secured in this event? Just get in the event so then you can deal with the roster. You have a couple days of wiggle room to deal with the roster and then you'll want to solidify your roster. I believe it's in the week leading up to the Saturday that you're actually going to compete. So that'll be uh, important to get, pay attention to. Now, we obviously have a couple, we got a, like a month or two, depending on when you're looking to compete. Um, but uh, hey, that, that time's going to evaporate very quickly here in the holiday season. So cool, very, very cool. All right, so that, that's, I think, kind of wraps up our registration issues. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, I, I look definitely forward to seeing how many teams we can get created. Uh, it, I know we were joking internally with some other people on our team that uh, like this time last year, we had like one team registered maybe or zero and we already have a handful. All right. And uh, I think a lot of that, of course, is just we're getting repeat customers. We're getting schools to come back, but we also have a new fancy interface. So a lot of these things are going to help registration go quickly. Um, but I can imagine that two weeks uh, once we get into January, like we're going to get a flood of registration this particular semester. Um, this particular season. So I definitely am anticipating another increase in participation. Um, and we did have a couple of regions uh, last season that they got to like 10 or 12 teams. They kind of filled up. Um, and so if you do have a specific weekend that is really, really important for you and your team, or maybe it's more like, no, I need to avoid this weekend and I need to definitely secure myself for the other weekends. Uh, just, just like I said, get, get three people on, on the team. Even if you're going to change the names a little bit later, that's okay. Make sure you actually register for your team.